All right, ladies and germs, welcome back to Big Board. First video in the new pad. Uh, got the table set up over by the window, so we've got a little, little glare, a little reflection. We'll get things squared away once we get all the tables and everything else. But in the meantime, I'm going to uh, attempt to do a quick introduction uh, of uh, the Spanish-American War, a splendid little war. Santiago campaign, July 1, 14, 1898. This is, I think, scenario three, where we combine the first two scenarios, one of the first of which was uh, the attempt to capture Fort El Viso, or, yes, El Viso, and El Cane, or Cane, or Cane, or whatever it is. And then, obviously, Santiago, or San Juan Hill, I should say, uh, that's the, you know, uh, Roosevelt's going to be in here somewhere with his Rough Riders. And so the scenario set up is pretty straightforward. Some relatively weak and ineffective uh, Mexican, uh, Spanish formations, sorry, uh, Mexican, uh, Spanish formations. And there's a capacity for the American forces to break down each unit can break down into three subcomponents, basically. Uh, so that uh, gives them a little bit of flexibility, but they will ultimately they lose uh, combat factors. So stacking all three together, for instance, will not equal the six here. Uh, so there's some pluses and minuses to the breakdowns. It's step loss system for the CRT. Uh, all pretty straightforward. Unfortunately, with the scenario set up, uh, you kind of got to guess where things go unless you actually go to Google Earth and look at where Santiago de Cuba is in the Santiago Harbor and work out which way is up, which way is north indeed. And so uh, because we're using directional setup instructions, so the Las Guamas Creek, we need to set up west, within one hex uh, west of uh, Las Guamas. Unfortunately, there's no compass for us on the map for some strange reason. Uh, it's one of the things that irritates me just in general with uh, publications or maps. Uh, if you can't be bothered putting a, uh, a, a compass for us on the map for us, you know, they don't make the game. Really, it's not that hard. Now, I will say there are some lovely uh, components for the game, though. The map is actually pretty cool. There's a, a little bit of a difference in the CRT and the, the colors, uh, the color matching. So this is Hill, oh, you can't see. Let me just move the camera. This is Hill Terrain and this is Hill Terrain here. So the, the colors don't align, unfortunately, unless this is a combination of terrain, I, I'm, I'm unclear. Also the clear, the clear's a little closer. Uh, the swamp is fine and the jungle the jungle is, is fine as well. But uh, the hills are the ones that are a bit of a problem. And just in terms of, it's the wrong color. Uh, this is a green and uh, it probably should not be. It should be brown by the looks of it. So I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, but the charts are nice quality, good thick paper or, or stock, I should say. Interestingly, they're not back printed. So you've got a combat fire results table, You've got, uh, you have a terrain effects chart, and you also have an assault combat results table that, uh, and none of them are back printed, which I just find unusual. Maybe that's the printer wasn't able to do it. I don't know. Maybe they got a discount for not back printing. <laughs> uh, who knows? And then uh, we also have, of course, uh, a little summary that we actually play the game off of. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So we're going to... Um, We'll be using this fairly effectively, I hope. Counters are a touch thin, and we'll kind of work that out as we go. I'm not uh, complaining about them uh, for the price point. It was fine. And uh, as I said, I think the map's attractive, but there's a, a few mismatches with bits and pieces. And the game uh, functions pretty interestingly because it's got a track here that deals with the yellow fever. And uh, it's quite a long campaign game. It's 28 turns, so there's AM, PM turns uh, across the 14 days for the full campaign. And as you get into the game, you're going to be uh, required to uh, begin rolling to see if 
the uh, if the yellow fever starts to take hold in your particular uh, side's forces, and then that can have a very negative effect upon combat, uh, obviously enough, and there are other effects on, on morale and whatnot. Uh, you've got the ability here to build trench uh, trenching uh, for uh, trenching uh, systems uh, for both uh, for the defense, and then I guess basically what happens here is once the once the Americans take these uh, fortifications and uh, capture San Juan Hill, for instance, then they're really on the on the, the jo their job then is to hold those and dig in themselves and uh, hold against a potential counterattack, which actually didn't eventuate. But what will I think the premise of the game is that hey, you know, look, this is all actually was actually pretty close or fairly near run thing if the if the uh, Spanish had have brought additional resources and forces to bear, they may well have been able to recapture uh, San Juan Hill, and that may have then changed the outcome of the, of the war and the siege that went on for Santiago. All right, so look, just a quick little uh, look at the, at the game and the components and the scenario we're going to play in the scenario uh, that we're, we're running here. The Spanish have to maintain control of these hexes. There's actually two hexes here and one here. Uh, so they're set up there, and then we've got the same uh, situation going on here. And it's only, uh, I can't remember now if it's either two or three turns. I think it's, it must be, I think it's three turns. A three turn scenario, and uh, it all should, all should go fairly quickly. The, the, the mechanics are pretty straightforward. Uh, the artillery line of sight rules are okay. No, no issues there that I that I've noted so far, and we'll uh, get get stuck into it and go roll some dice and see what happens. All right, adios.